What is up guys, welcome back to another episode of Ryan Myers Expeditions. You guys have been asking for it for such a long time, so finally we're doing it. We're gonna show you guys what's in my gear bag. Now before I show you guys this, I gotta let you know, a lot of my stuff is kind of super worn out. I've been using this stuff for like eight or nine months now, ever since I came from Fiji to Hawaii, and I haven't really got new stuff yet, but I've got a really exciting new batch of stuff coming out. All my stuff is gonna be upgraded, so I'm not gonna really talk to you about brands. I'm gonna kinda show you the basics of what you guys should be looking for in all of your spearfishing equipment. Having good gear that works for you is by far the easiest way in the world that you guys can feel comfortable in the water and shoot more fish without learning anything new. All you gotta do is make sure you have the right gear for you, not necessarily the most expensive gear in the world, but the right gear for you and have it set up properly. Let's get started and we'll start right away with the mask. I'm gonna start with the spearfishing mask because I believe it is by far your most important piece of equipment. I see people struggle all the time with leaking and fogging and I promise you, if you're having either one of those two things going on, you are not shooting fish. So the most important quality about a mask is that it fits your face. Now there's a million masks out there, there's a million brands. This one's personally the Cressy Nano, I've used it for a long time, I love it, but it doesn't matter. When I take a new client or I take a friend or somebody to the store, to the dive shop to pick out a mask, you better try on 100 masks. You need to pick the one that you love. And if you do not love your mask, go back and try again because there are so many options out there. Some of the basic characteristics that you're looking for in a mask are low volume. And that's a huge difference from your scuba mask. A free diving mask has about half the volume of a scuba mask. And that's so important when you're going deep, when you're equalizing, when you're out there spearfishing. Another really, really important part of a spearfishing mask is this black skirt. The skirt should be black to block out all the light from coming in around it. Alrighty guys, so when you're at your spearfishing shop and you're trying on all your different masks, this is how you do it. Make sure that you shave before you go to the store to try on your mask. Make sure that you shave before you go diving. I have to always shave. I have no idea how people do it with the beards, the mustache, you're gonna be leaking. So, goes like this. Comes on, it should just stick. Push it like that, it should stay. Just like that. There's no spaces anywhere. Mask is perfect. That's how you know it's a good mask. So now that you've picked out your free diving mask, you've got something that you absolutely love, it's time to find a snorkel. Now, you're not looking for any of those fancy snorkels. You don't want anything on the top, you don't want anything on the bottom. You want a simple J snorkel just like that. Nice and squishy here, slightly flexible here, but not too flexible. And then when you attach it, you wanna attach it up here high on the back of your head. A lot of people wanna put them on the side of their head here, but that doesn't make any sense. Your face is down in the water like that, your mask, your, it should be on the back of your head like that, so when it's there, it's at the highest point sticking out of the water. The way I like to attach it, I throw away the clips that come with it, and I take two zip ties. You'll take a zip tie, and you'll attach one to the actual mask skirt, and then one right here. And then, when I'm out there in the water, if I need to rotate it, I can adjust this just a little bit either way. It sits, it stays in place, that's a good spot for it, and when I'm diving, it'll rotate around my head and get out of the way. Now that you've got your mask and snorkel set up, it's so, so important to defog it. And you do this at the beginning, kind of permanently, and then you do it every single time you go diving. And the way you do it the first time is you take a lighter and you burn your mask. After you've burned it, you toothpaste it, you rub it around and you get all the silicone, whatever's left in there from the manufacturing process. Then, every single time before you go diving, you rinse it in baby shampoo before you get in the water. Baby shampoo is the greatest thing ever. It's always in my dive bag. It's always in my dive bag because it comes with three uses. I'll use it to lube up my wetsuit, which I'll show you next. I use it as defog for my mask, and I use it as a shower at the end of the day. So to defog my mask with baby shampoo, I do maybe like one to 10, like one part to 10 parts water. So one part baby shampoo, 10 parts water. I mix it up in a water bottle or I mix it up in the old baby shampoo bottle and I've always got that with me. And it's the last thing I do before getting in the water. All my gear will be on, I'll have my mask in my hand, I'll squirt, go in the water. For that, you always wanna use fresh water. So I'm always bringing fresh water to the beach with me for my mask defog. For my wetsuit lube, maybe I'll do like 25% or 30% baby shampoo to water, and then obviously when I'm taking a shower, I use it straight up. Guys, the wetsuit is another really, really important part of your dive gear. And don't care how warm it is wherever you're diving, if you are not wearing a full suit, you're not hunting properly, period. Those people you see wearing board shorts out there hunting are not doing it right. 
to wear a full suit of some kind. I don't care whether it's so warm and you're wearing yoga leggings or you're wearing a thin lycra suit. If you're not down there hunting in the bottom and really getting tucked up underneath ledges, hiding in the coral, being touching stuff, you're not hunting right. So a full wetsuit is imperative to hunting. A wetsuit does a lot of things. It'll keep you warm, it'll keep the sun off you, it'll keep the salt and the jellyfish and all the stingy things out there from stinging you. It'll also protect you when you're getting in and out of the water where it's rocky and reefy, especially here in Hawaii where we do a lot of crazy shore exits and entries. Some really important things to look for in a wetsuit are thickness, obviously. First of all, you have to get your thickness right depending on wherever you are in the world and how warm it is that you're diving. You do not want to go too thick. I always prefer to just be a little bit cold and do more activity. I can move around a little bit more and stay warm rather than wear a suit that's too thick and I have to wear a lot of weight. If you're wearing a lot of weight with a thick wetsuit, it is extremely difficult to dive deep. Some other really important things you want to look for on a wetsuit for spearfishing is a hood. You really want this full hood. It protects your hair, it gets it back of your neck. It, it's really good for looking at holes. Again, it's a lot of protection. It keeps your head warm, keeps in all that heat. Pretty much every spearfishing suit will come with a hood. Another really, really important thing you're looking for is this open cell. So that means that there's actually open rubber on the inside. And that's why we need to use the baby shampoo to lube up before we get in the suit. So pretty much all your spearfishing suits are gonna come with some kind of loading pad there. And that's super important to not tear up your chest when you're loading all day long. Another important thing to look for in a suit is a knife pocket. I'm a really, really big fan of knife pockets on suits. I like to keep a knife in there, obviously, but you can also keep throw flashers in there. You could keep some extra chum in there. You could keep a bag, whatever it is that you might need throughout the day. It's a good storage spot. Pretty much all free diving wetsuits are gonna be two piece suits. There's a lot of really, really good wetsuit manufacturers out there, but those are kind of the, some of the key things that you're looking for when you're out there at your dive shop picking out a suit. On my feet, I'm a really, really big fan of cotton socks. I get these at Walmart, I get them at Ross, you get them anywhere. They work so unbelievably well out here on the lava rock. When you're walking to and fro your, from your car, you're gonna tear up those neoprene socks. You go through them so fast. These are so cheap, they're just about disposable. They're awesome. You get a couple dives out of each one or, or maybe a week or two, depending on what you're doing. Cotton socks don't compress when you go down like neoprene. If you, if you go super deep with a thick neoprene sock, your fin is actually gonna get looser and looser as you get down. Socks are all about comfort though. And if, you have a, if you've got a foot pocket that maybe fits you a little bit too big and you need to layer up on socks or do the neoprene socks, do whatever you've gotta do. I don't feel strongly about your sock decision, but I'm a big fan of the cotton. Gloves are often overlooked out here. There's so many to choose from at any of your local dive shops, but I think that there's only a couple that even matter. You're looking for a Dyneema glove, thin like this. Assuming we're in warm water, you're looking for a Dyneema glove, thin like this, that fits really, really well. They are not all created equal. Some of them have completely different padding down here. Some of them are thick, rubbery, scratchy, rubbery. There's all kinds of different ones here, but these ones I really like, they're kind of, oh, they're like, it's almost like a, like a rhino lining or something. It, it's, it's rad. They live a lot, they last a long time, even with my fingerprints always scratching there on the, on the, on the ground. These ones have a strap. The Spear Pro ones, the Salvamar ones don't have a strap. Either one, wonderful gloves. Guys, do not go out there with only one glove. It's ridiculous. I see that all the time online. You guys are sitting there with one glove flashing, with one glove for your fish, maybe no, no glove on your trigger hand. Your gloves are so important to, to grab fish, to tackle things. They're, you gotta protect yourself out there in the water, especially getting in and out, they're a huge help. A good pair of gloves is key. You can kinda see how tight these fit on me. That's really what I'm looking for too. I'm not looking for big baggy gloves. So another really, really important thing when you're free diving is a free diving weight belt. Now why it's a free diving belt and not a scuba belt is because it's stretchy. And that stretch kinda gives you more flexibility when you're down there and you're trying to take that big last breath. Another thing I really like with your weights is the smallest weights you can find. Usually that's one pounders. I really like coated weights. They help a lot, especially if you're doing a lot of boat dives for not beating up people's gel coats. Pretty much all spearfishing or free diving belts will come with a quick, quick release here. So if you got that, it's on you and you need to ditch it. All you gotta do is grab that and it should fall right off. Guys, be careful when you're wearing your belts to not tie them. I see this a lot where people have it here and then they do a little loop here and they bring it around. Guys, if you need to ditch it, you can't ditch that. It's gotta be out here free floating. Having the right amount free floating is really important. I really like that, like, you know, less than a foot. That's a really good distance right here. Some people have them real long, just cut them. You only need 
six inches to a foot to still be able to adjust your weights and yet have enough to grab and drop it if you need to. So I get a lot of questions about this right here. And what it is, is it just a neck weight? All it is is like an inner tube filled with lead balls and it goes around your neck and it helps me kind of float straight down when I'm diving. It takes a couple pounds off of my belt. It's a skill that I picked up from free diving. I don't recommend you guys all do it. And the reason I don't recommend it is because you cannot quick release it. The two or three times that I've dropped my belt in my life that I really, really needed it, I really needed to drop my belt, I wish I could have dropped this too. So guys, not, not recommended, but answers the question of what is that on your neck that I'm always getting. For fins, obviously here I'm using a carbon fiber blade. I switch blades a lot, and especially in the last couple months, I mean, I've used Moanas, I've used the Setmas, these are the Florida Freediver Carbons. There's a couple things to really keep in mind when you're talking freediving fins. And honestly, I would say the number one mistake is everybody goes too stiff. Your fins should kind of match your body size. So if you're a smaller person, you're gonna need a softer fin. Medium sized person, even then, you're looking at a medium soft. Only really big, strong guys should have those stiff fins. These carbon fiber fins may seem kind of fragile, but honestly, they're super durable. You should be able to get three, four, five years out of a pair. A lot of the brands have four or five year warranties, so don't be afraid to spend the extra money on the carbons. If you gotta go plastic, that's completely fine. Cressy makes a really good popular one that was like the most popular fin in the world, Pro probably still is. But guys, long fins are key for free diving and spearfishing. It is the way that we kick. We kick super slow on our way down and we're not burning a lot of energy and so much of that has to do with the fin and your finning technique. For foot pockets, you want a comfortable pocket that fits you really well. Right now, I really like the Pathos pockets. I really like the Setma pockets. Whatever fits you well though is key. Try them on. You shouldn't ever get any blisters from your fins. They should fit you really, really snug and comfort is key with these things. You should feel really, really good kicking around your pair of fins. There is a different set of muscles that kind of goes with long fins. So when you start out, you may feel really sore down in the calf or leg area, but there's a difference between that like initial soreness and being sore all the time. You shouldn't struggle to kick your fins. It should be easy and calm and not take a bunch of energy and that is again back to that stiffness where everybody makes those mistakes. For spear guns out here, right now, I'm really shooting two main spear guns. I've got two Rob Allen carbons. One is a 100 centimeter and one is a 120. They're set up almost identical in every aspect except for their length. One is 20 centimeters longer than the other, that's it. So for the Rob Allen carbons, I really like the Rob Allen reels down here. They're strong, they're sturdy. I've got some thin Dyneema reel line. This is like some 1.8 stuff. I'm a real big fan of Dyneema shooting line. Now your Dyneema shooting line, especially out here in Hawaii, is not gonna break on the reef. It's not gonna break in wrecks in Florida. It's really strong and I'm not afraid of when I get something stuck down there, of just kind of pulling it back out. It's like four or 500 breaking strength. You can't hurt this stuff. To connect my shaft Dyneema to my real Dyneema, I use the knot here. And I think that's so, so important. It's a trick I picked up in Europe because they cannot have any kinds of noises going against their gun. If you put a clip on this thing, like a lot of people do, and this thing sits here and it whacks right here all day long while you're doing this, so many of those fish are just gonna take off and leave. So I do a real simple knot right here. I have a knot at the end of it. I'll show it to you guys close up. But when I'm out there diving in the water, all I've gotta do to, if I get something in the brain or if I can't get the shaft out, all I've gotta do is grab and bite it. Bites. Quick release, comes apart, it takes 10 seconds. I can put it back together, underwater, with my gloves on, no worries, in a few seconds. Super simple, fisherman's knot here, just a little couple loops there, gets tucked through, comes back, just like that. I've caught tons of tuna, dog tooth tuna, anything on this, it absolutely will not break until you need it to, and then it's done, just like that, no problem. That's a really easy trick that anybody can do to their gun right now that they have at home, whether they're using Dyneema or Mono, and significantly up their rigging of their gun in 10 seconds for no money at all. So for all my rollers, I use a load assist. And what that means is I don't have a loop up here to grab. And I believe that if you can grab and take your gun and load it just like that, especially this bigger size, that 100, that 120, it's not powerful enough. These single rollers are made to do the work of two bands. So if it's not awful to load, you're doing it wrong. So the way we do that, load assist, clips in right there, comes like that, comes here, pops in, comes up, loads. Not gonna load it on land, but you guys have seen me do it a 
ton of times you get the idea. Right now I'm using these Rob Allen reels. They're simple, they're durable. Everything that comes out of South Africa is strong. Honest to God, guys, I will take this gun and I will throw it up on the rocks before I'm coming out of the water. You can't hurt them. Almost all spearfishing reels should come with this quick release here so that when you pull them, they rip. If they're not doing that, guys, a problem I see a lot of times is people put the reel line on the wrong way. So if they wrapped it the other way, when you pull that line off, it's gonna tighten, it's not gonna freeze pull. So another trick for you guys while we're here is with these reels, the way I reel them back in in the water, especially when I do a deep dive and I've got hundreds of feet of line out, I'll take it just like this and I'll wedge it kind of right here in my wetsuit and it just goes like this. And you can reel it in super fast instead of trying to do it out here or do it any other way, plant it right there, reel it in. You can use your hand there, your finger to guide it back and forth and you'll, you'll be great. So I just had a couple comments on this right here. This is my actual belt cooey. Super ghetto, I was literally on my way to go diving like six months ago. I grabbed it out of someone's garage, I tied a knot in it there, it just wraps around here, no big deal, just some wire. I go like this, it wraps right here, sits on me all day. Anytime I need it, I can take it off and I can use it. Guys, you don't need fancy stuff. It's not about spending money on equipment, it's just about finding what works best for you. So last but not least, I have my dive float here. I have it attached to a 100 foot rife float line. I've got a little, probably like 20 feet of that wrapped around here so that it makes it just a little bit shorter. For, I've been doing a lot of shallow diving lately. This creek cooler is really freaking cool. It's a new addition to my kit. This is actually the creek cooler pup, 15 liters. You can see I can open it here one-handed, pop the top off. It's super well insulated and I can fit about 15, 20 pounds of fish in there as well as like a few pounds of ice. And I can go for four or five hours and my fish will stay pretty cold. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. You guys have been asking for that one for a long time, so I hope I didn't disappoint you. We've got some other really, really cool ones coming up. We're gonna give you the breath hold one soon, I promise. But until then, thank you guys so much. Make sure you like this video, subscribe, and let us know what you wanna see next down in the comments below.